The crux of Grover's algorithm is understanding what these operators O and D do. In the last video, we saw that they have the property that if they act on vectors in the S prime X star plane, they produce vectors in the S prime X star plane. And since our initial vector, the uniform superposition is in the S prime X star plane, all vectors we produce by applying this subroutine will also be in the S prime X star plane. And this is really useful because it allows us to look at these operators from a geometric point of view. The behavior of O is easy to understand. Let's say we have an arbitrary vector V in the S prime X star plane. We'll define it by this angle phi from S prime. Then O acting on V reflects V about S prime because we're just negating the x star component of v. So now we have a vector in angle phi below s prime. Now I wanna take a brief detour and look at what reflection operators look like in general. So O is a specific reflection operator about s prime. I wanna see what a reflection operator looks like about an arbitrary vector, let's say w. To reflect a vector v about another vector w, we break v down into two components. One piece that's parallel to the vector w and one piece that's perpendicular to the vector w. I'm going to call these v parallel and v perpendicular. The result of reflecting v about w is equivalent to taking v and subtracting off the perpendicular component. This just gives us the parallel component and then subtracting off the perpendicular component again. That is the effect of applying this operator R sub W on V is V minus V perpendicular minus V perpendicular again or V minus two times V perpendicular. So now the only question is, is what is V perpendicular? And we can figure this out by using two pieces of information we already have. And those two pieces are V parallel is parallel to W. So it's just going to be some scalar multiple of W. Let's call that scalar K for now. And we also know that the inner product of W with V perpendicular is equal to zero. That's how the perpendicular component is defined. We can find out what the value of k is by taking the inner product of w and v. And so this is gonna be equal to the inner product of w and v parallel plus the inner product of w and v perpendicular because the inner product has this property of linearity. But the inner product of w with v perpendicular is zero. So this is actually just equal to the inner product of w and v parallel. But we can also figure this out because we know V parallel is W scaled by K. So the inner product of W with V parallel is actually K times the inner product of W with itself. And assuming W is a normalized vector, this is just equal to one. So the inner product of W and V is equal to K. Or flipping that around, K is equal to the inner product of W with V. So V parallel is equal to the inner product of W and V times W. And this means V perpendicular, which is equal to V minus V parallel, is V minus the inner product of W and V times W. So this reflection operator R sub W acting on the vector V gives V minus two times V perpendicular, which we just saw is V minus the inner product of W and V times W. And we can simplify this to two times the inner product of W and V times W minus V. And if we wanna write this as an operator acting on V, that operator is two times the projection onto W minus the identity operator. So it turns out that the operator R sub W is equal to two times the projection onto W minus I. And this was completely general. So the reflection operator about any normalized vector has this form. 
And this turns out to be precisely the form of the Grover diffusion operator D, which is equal to two times the projection onto S minus the identity operator. And since S is a normalized vector, D is actually a reflection about S. So let's return to the S prime X star plane. We have the vector that results from applying O to our original vector V. This vector is an angle phi below S prime. And we have the vector S. And I'm going to define the angle between S and S prime to be theta. The angle between S and the vector that results from acting on V with O is phi plus theta. So a uh, reflection about S produces a vector, an angle phi plus theta above s. And since s is an angle theta above s prime, the angle between this vector and s prime is phi plus two theta. So the angle between our initial vector v and s prime was phi, and we just saw that the angle between the vector that we get by applying o and d to v and s prime is phi plus two theta. So the result of applying O and D to our vector is to essentially rotate it by an angle two theta away from S prime and hence towards X star. Let's define the angle between psi R, the state the system is in after R applications of the subroutine and S prime to be phi R. So what we just showed is that phi r plus one is equal to phi r plus two theta. That is, we increase the angle by an amount two theta with each application of the subroutine. Now, because psi zero is equal to the uniform superposition, we actually know what phi zero is. Phi zero is equal to theta, the angle between the uniform superposition and s prime. And this means phi 1 is equal to theta plus 2 theta, phi 2 is equal to theta plus 4 theta, and in general phi r is equal to the quantity 2r plus 1 times theta. So now we know the state our system will be in after r applications of the subroutine. And in a later video, we'll analyze this to figure out how many times we should apply the subroutine to maximize the probability of collapsing the system to the state x star upon measurement.